Doesn't seem to be any foreign debris, which is good. Oh, wow. Here we are. Now, if you watched the last video, you'll know that we picked up a very cheap R36 estate from auction. It's got 189,000 miles on it and it sounds amazing. One of the main reasons it was so cheap was because it has no MOT. So to rectify this, I'm pleased to announce that I've teamed up with eBay UK to get this thing up to scratch. Like most of you DIYers out there, it's been the go-to place for me when sourcing parts for the various projects. And with it currently being MOT season, it made perfect sense to collaborate on the Passat. They've even created a section on the website dedicated to MOTs with everything that you need in one place to get your car ready. Whether it's something simple like a set of wiper blades or a full suspension and brakes overhaul, with over 7 million items available, you're bound to find what you need. I've placed a link to it down below in the description. Head over there and take a look. The savings of up to 20% and majority of the items are offering quick and free delivery. Now back to the Passat, let's do a quick recap on what we found in the introduction video. On the engine side of things, there was a bit of a timing chain rattle when we collected it. I attempted to fix this with a new upper tensioner, but this didn't really go to plan. So I ended up throwing the old one back in until we do the complete timing chain job. Despite this, the car does run pretty good once it's warm, but the most noticeable thing was the oil leak around the rocker cover. This indicates a worn out gasket, so that is one of the items on the agenda today, as you can see here on this shiny new table. Along with that, I've got the various intake manifold gaskets, as we're going to be splitting that apart to get access to the rocker cover, as well as a set of new OEM spark plugs. We did also get the car up on the lift for an underside inspection. It seems like a pretty genuine vehicle, but the one thing I did notice was a few cracked bushes, mainly on the front control arms. They've clearly been due for a while now, as prior year MOT history showed it to be an advisory and the solution I found to this was to just buy a complete front arm kit off eBay. I always prefer to do it this way as it's a more cost effective solution and you're going to be under there so why not do it all properly in one go. The kit also comes with new ball joints and drop links. Now the rear of the car did display a lot more rust compared to the front as there's a lot less aluminium being used and ultimately the best way to solve this is going to be dropping the subframe and just refurbishing everything but nevertheless I've picked up an equivalent rear arm kit from eBay as well. It comes with the two lower arms as well as the upper camber arm and also the drop links. But yeah, both of the kits I've shown you here today are of OE quality, so you got nothing to be worried about in that department. They're just at a more reasonable price and links to them will also be down below in the description. Now that's pretty much the bulk of items that we're gonna be installing, but there's one thing I haven't mentioned just yet and that's this right here. Now this is a PCV diaphragm for the VR6 engine. There's not really much to it, it's just a little piece of rubber. But why it's significant is because in most cases as a genuine item, you can't order this separately. You have to get the whole rocker cover because in most cases, your rocker cover is probably going to be fine and a new one's going to cost you, I don't know, three, four hundred pounds. And this only costs less than 15 pounds. So that's all the explanations done. Now it's time to finally get our hands dirty and we'll make a start with the rocker cover gasket first. The process is pretty straightforward. Firstly, you got to remove the air box as you do with practically any engine bay related job. I then somehow managed to snap the V6 plaque in half with basically no effort. This basically covers the coil pack harness, which I was trying to prop up as unplugging the coil packs is next on the list. The coil packs themselves actually come out pretty easily. You just got to tug on them with some pliers but I did actually leave number five attached to the harness because of how bad the clip was. You've then got the various torque screws on the lower part of the intake manifold. These actually stay in place, but then you've got two at the top, which actually do fully come out. Then you've just got a few electrical connectors next to the throttle body and one corrugated hose. And then you've got two at the back. The one on the left simply pulls off and the one on the right, you just gotta press the little white tab. And then you've got one single M10 spline bolt. From here, it's pretty much plain sailing to get the rocker cover off. It's got a bunch of 10 millimeters around the outer perimeter, but you've also got one little bracket off to the left below the oil cap. So undo that and you're pretty much good to go. And now that it's been removed, we can see exactly how pristine my particular rocker cover is. I haven't got any specialist cleaning equipment at the unit yet. So I just went at it with some brake cleaner and a microfiber. And it's safe to say I'm pretty happy with the end result. Doesn't seem to be any foreign debris, which is good. There is a bit of sludge around the edges naturally and a bit there. We've also got the top of the chain here. You actually can see, I'll throw a little shot of the overlay of where that tensioner we changed in goes. It's just down there. I remember seeing a clip online of one way, we're just completely loose, so that's not too bad. But yeah, moving back over to the table, I've got all of this set up. So you can see here, we've still got the rocker cover gasket in place. You can tell that's, well, I was gonna say it's quite brittle, but that literally snapped rather than bending. Now, in terms of changing out that PCV diaphragm that I got from eBay, it's not straight away apparent when you look at it, but obviously as you inspect further, you can see there's a few little screws holding this in place. That's obviously the PCV system. Do a change is a bit of an understatement because it's not really rubber anymore. So much gunk on them that you will think that they're not even got any thread, but they have. Yeah, it looks like an absolute mess, doesn't it? Oh, wow. <laughs> Legit looks like vomit. Check that out, folks. 
just touched it and it teared. So it wasn't damaged, but it probably would have eventually. So you got a spring and that you need to transfer over. New one's a lot more supple. So there we go, eBay PCV diaphragm in. Next, it was time for some prep work before getting everything all built back up. First was removing all the sludge from inside the Graka cover and also the PCV. It's got 189,000 miles on it, so it's never gonna be perfect but at least it's an improvement. Once that was done, I got all the gaskets fitted back up. On the engine side of things, I gave it a quick vacuum, both in the inner gaps and also the spark plug tubes. It's one of the reasons why I hadn't removed them just yet, as there was some dirt that I'd found inside them. Also made sure to clean up the mating surface where the old gasket had allowed oil to seep through. And to top this off, I was also told I need to apply some sealant in two of the corners. Don't snag anything. Start doing these up by hand first. Right, so we got the rocket cover back on along with the new gasket and also the PCV diaphragm. The next thing we wanna do is pull out the spark plugs because we haven't actually checked them yet. But before we go ahead and have a look at the condition of those, I just wanted to quickly mention something. If you enjoy content on this channel, make sure you do go ahead and subscribe. As I said previously, I've set a target of 200K subs for the channel this year. Got a bunch of builds planned. So yeah, it'd be great to have you on board. 5.8 spark plug socket with the magnet on the end. And then we've got lazy mode. But yeah, there is some good news. This car hasn't got any cheap spark plugs in it. They're pretty much exactly like the ones we're going to be putting in. You can see it right there, VWAG NGK OEM plug. Now, the tips are pretty burnt up. I'm not too sure when they were last changed. As mentioned, we've got zero history with this car. Now, I know a few you did mention opening the glove box on the side, and there's a little orange tab. So I did that, and all you find is a CD changer. So yeah, pretty nice difference there. We'll get six of those back in now and basically just breeze through the rest, get the inlet back on, because we've pretty much done the main thing we wanted to do here, which was changing out the rocker cover gasket. Quite pleased with the end result. No leaks anywhere in sight. All the edges are nice and dry. Just check the oil as well. That's all sound from when we did the change in the previous video. So pretty much all that's left in the engine bay is so to just chuck a jump pack on it and just start it up. Nice. Now that we were done with the engine bay, it was time to get the R36 up onto the lift for the underside work. And straight away, I got a nice surprise. The retaining screw for the front passenger brake disc was completely loose. Easily remedied, of course. Now, I put some penetrating spray on this overnight to let it soak in, and I just tested a few, and they seem to be coming off okay. Now, the top nut for the ball joint is going to be a bit tricky to get to, so we may want to remove the drive shaft bolt, which is a 24mm. Now onto the topic of these front arms. Long time viewers of the channel will recall that I've changed these out a number of times on similarly aged VW Group project cars. A good example of this was the Mark V Edition 30, where as part of that car's handling overhaul, I actually fitted this exact eBay B6 Passat front arm kit to it. And my reasoning for doing so is it's actually an upgrade for the Golf as they come with cast arms from the factory. So you get a bit of weight saving for a relatively low price, as well as them looking pretty cool as a result. Now, based on this past knowledge, I didn't really anticipate any challenges with this particular job. However, as with most things on this channel we did end up putting up a pretty good fight the issue i found was the front bolt on the control arm is actually obscured on both sides on the r36 usually it's just the one on the gearbox side that's normally a bit of a problem but what it did mean was i was gonna have to drop the full subframe i did allow for this in my planning so i ordered new stretch bolts in advance and also a vertical standing jack thing but unfortunately that didn't want to cooperate so i had to result to using a shelf with a box on top of it to balance the subframe there's a bunch of 18 millimeters involved and a few 16 mils so nothing too complex. There we are. Okay, so new arms are in place. I've put a few of the subframe bolts back up. We are going to replace as much as possible. But I did end up taking more off than I initially anticipated. But yeah, you will remember that this one was pretty cracked. It'll drive a lot better with that, I can tell you that for sure. It does look pretty straight. I just had a look through the gap there. But we'll slowly put them in. Next, we're going to move on to the drop links. It should be relatively straightforward. It attaches there onto the strut assembly and there onto the anti-roll bar. You've either got an Allen head in the middle or a Torx. I've just checked and I believe these are T30s. Just move it slightly with this. Hmm, did the trick. Okay then folks, just use an impact gun. <laughs> yep, knew it, there's not much space there. Anyway, we'll loosen the anti-roll bar like before. You can finally use the T30 for something. 
because there's no way the impacts fit in in that gap. And there we have it. That's a comparison with the old drop link with the new one. Okay, quick little thing I just wanted to point out. This has been changed on this side because that knot on the end is a 19 mil as opposed to 18 on the other side. There's a little pattern there on the end, so I don't know what brand that is. That is out. Yep, so my suspicions are correct. They're definitely different brands. I don't know why someone would do this. I'd always change both of them in pairs, but it is what it is. It no longer is on the car. Now, the interesting thing with these ones is you don't actually have an insert on the thread where you put like a T30 or an Allen. They essentially, just put a 16 mil span in the middle and tighten it up with an 18. Brakes could do with a bit of a tidy up. Obviously, we found that the discs are new, but I did try scrubbing that down with some brake cleaner and a cloth, and it was a bit more thicker than anticipated but we'll get to that i'm sure soon now on the topic of cleaning i've given the subframe a bit of a spray down so it actually looks aluminium now and matches the rest of the arms as before it was completely caked in 189,000 miles of dirt now whilst the front end is now looking a lot shinier this is by no means the end result i'm intending for this project for example we're still running the old anti-roll bar which in the grand scheme of things isn't too bad the paint's still on but we've got the old dampers yes they're not leaking but it'd be nice to put some fresh ones on there but it's heading in the right direction and at least now we're not going to have any issues with bushes on the mot the end goal is obviously full restoration mode on the r36 it's something i've never done on the channel before so i'm quite looking forward to the challenge even though I'm not actually a mechanic, I just go with the flow and just have a bit of fun in the process. Now, on that particular topic, I have had a bit of a change of mind with the rear of the car, so let me explain. Now, you will recall at the start of the video, I showed you a few rear suspension components, mainly this lower control arm, the upper camber arm, and also this arm here, which attaches and basically roots up there. Now, whilst I was working on the front end, I was just having to think about the approach for this. And I've decided that I'm not going to be installing those parts today just on their own. I think what's best with this whole situation is to drop the whole subframe and do it properly on the floor. It'd be nice to get those bushes and the subframe all checked out and this all powder coated. And then behind there, we can have a look at the shallows. You can see a bit of rust is creeping through. It's not going to be a quick process by any means because I'm going to have to learn on the job. And I think I need a few more workshop tools to take on that. We're still quite empty in here. You can see by the echo. Let me know what you think of all of that in the comments down below regardless. But yeah, I think this is a good place to end today's video. Drop a like on it if you enjoyed it and also subscribe if you are new here. I also want to give a massive thanks to eBay UK for sponsoring today's video. It's a pleasure to be working alongside them. As mentioned earlier, they have set up a dedicated page to all MOT related items as it is currently the season. So the link to that will be down below as well as all the parts you've seen today. It's a place to get the best savings as well as quick delivery. And you can bet that after I stop filming this clip, I'm going to go and order some more parts for the R36. Yeah, I'll see you in a few days time for the next video.